Theodore Tobler entered the confectionery industry as he was born into it. Although his father, who owned a chocolate shop, taught him about the business from a young age, no one could have foreseen that he would transform his fate and establish the most unique chocolate brand ever known. Get ready to immerse yourself in the captivating story of Toblerone. Part 1. A Family Business Theodore Tobler's life was sealed from the moment he was born in 1876 in the town of Bryan, situated in the west central part of Switzerland. While he enjoyed a typical childhood, there was one crucial difference that set him apart. His father, Johann Jacob Tobler, was a skilled chocolatier in the city. Growing up, Theodore Tobler found himself constantly surrounded by the tantalizing aroma and irresistible allure of chocolate. Even Johann's nieces and nephews would leave the pockets full of chocolate whenever they visited. It was during these formative years that Theodore developed a passionate appetite for sweets. Johan had completed an apprenticeship in a confectionery shop as a teenager and eventually established his own shop in 1868. The success of Johan's chocolate creation soon surpassed expectations and production struggled to keep up with the demand. Consequently, he had to construct a small factory to accommodate the growing needs of his customers. As Johan, better known as John, aged, he made preparations to pass on the family business to his three children. In 1899, John opened a factory named Fabric the Chocolate Burn, and the following year, he retired from the day-to-day -day operations, entrusting the future of the business to his offspring. Among John's children, Theodore stood out as the most fervently dedicated to the confectionery trade, much like his brother, Sean. Theodore had been captivated by the enchantment of creating confectionery ever since he witnessed his father filling the town with joy through his delectable treats. Theodore's aspiration was to leave his own indelible mark on the industry. As he entered his teenage years, his father's business flourished. In those times, chocolatiers had a significant role, with most confectionaries being individually crafted rather than mass-produced in factories. Consequently, the knowledge passed down to the next was highly valued and closely guarded. Theodore listened attentively, absorbing the secrets of confectionery making store management, and overall business operations. More than his siblings, Theodore felt an exhilarating excitement about the prospect of creating his own unique brand of confectionery. His passion was so strong that he even constructed his own residence adjacent to the factory. However, there was one vital element missing in Theodore's vision, the opportunity to sell his own creations. Part 2. The Birth of Toblerone When Theodore inherited the fabric the chocolate burn from his father, he wasted no time in embarking on a journey of experimentation, collaborating with his cousin, Emily Bowman, who worked as a production manager at a chocolate company, Theodore sought to develop a new and exciting product. The inspiration came when Bowman returned from Metz, a city in northeast France, with a white nougat. Captivated by its flavor and crunchy texture, Theodore decided to incorporate it into his own recipe. Late one evening, the two cousins found the perfect balance of milk chocolate and nougat in Theodore's kitchen. The nougat, a delectable combination of almonds, honey, and sugar, provided a firm texture for the candy, complemented by a coating of Tobler's milk chocolate that would melt in one's mouth. It was in the year 1908 that they unveiled their masterpiece, a unique chocolate bar consisting of white nougat, honey, almonds, and Tobler's signature milk chocolate. This groundbreaking creation stood unmatched by any other product of its kind, solidifying their success. Tobler and Bowman knew they had struck gold. Part 3. Creating a Business To brand their innovative new product, Theodore and Bowman decided to leverage Tobler's well-established name as respected chocolatiers. They combined Tobler with Tyrone, an Italian word representing the type of nougat they used. Theodore became the first Swiss individual to seek a patent for Toblerone's manufacturing process. The patent outlined the fundamental procedures, although the company has since kept many production secrets undisclosed. When Toblerone was introduced in 1908, its initial packaging closely resembled the one we recognize today. The debut emphasized that it was the first patented Swiss milk chocolate. Despite some criticism about its unconventional shape and potential sales challenges, Theodore Tobler remained committed to their design, recognizing its marketing potential. His vision proved accurate, as Toblerone became an unrivaled candy bar sensation. The origin of the iconic triangular shape is a subject of lively debate. 
Officially, the shape pays homage to the majestic Matterhorn Mountain in the Swiss Alps, which is depicted in the product's imagery. The triangles are connected by a longer base, allowing them to be easily broken off individually. However, other accounts, including those from Theodore's sons, claim that the triangular shape has a different, more intriguing origin. It is said that after a night in Paris, Theodore Tobler witnessed dancers at the Foley's Berger Theatre forming a pyramid by climbing atop of each other. Allegedly, it was this experience that inspired Theodore to adopt a triangular shape for the Toblerone. Part 4. Spike and Fall The timing of Toblerone's release couldn't have been more opportune. The confectionery market experienced a significant surge after World War I, which lasted from 1914 to 1918. During the war, European soldiers were often provided with chocolate rations to boost their energy and morale. Toblerone didn't directly supply troops, but it contributed to the global demand for candy bars. This helped Theodore Tobler expand his father's confectionery shop into one of the largest employers in town. By 1920, approximately 2,000 people were working at the Toblerone factory. With the assistance of Emil Bowman's father, who headed the experts for Toblerone, the candy reached the United States and other parts of the world. Toblerone's distinctive taste and unique shape gained immense popularity, making it a global sensation. The original packaging featured an eagle, later replaced by Bernie's bear, which appears on the coat of arms of Theodore's hometown. By the 1920s, Toblerone was generating more than 1,100 million francs in annual revenue, which, when adjusted for inflation, would be over a billion dollars today. However, Toblerone couldn't evade the impact of the Great Depression, which began in 1929 and caused a 15% drop in global GDP. The depression adversely affected various sectors, including heavy industry, construction, and farming. Chocolate prices soared due to the ripple effects of economic instability, burdening Toblerone with significant debts. As a result, Theodore Tobler was replaced by a board of directors in the 1930s. Theodore passed away in the 1941 as a wealthy individual. Since then, Toblerone was changed ownership multiple times, yet managed to survive by adapting to evolving market conditions. In 1907, Toblerone formed a partnership with the Swiss chocolate brand Sockhart to create the Interfood Company. This collaboration contributed to the brand's global recognition, transforming Toblerone into a worldwide icon through ingenious marketing strategies. Part 5. The Toblerone Legacy True to Theodore Tobler's prediction, the distinctive shape of Toblerone garnered significant attention, becoming a magnet for advertising in various forms of media. The iconic chocolate bar made appearances in the 1971 film Charlie in the Chocolate Factory and the popular sitcom Friends further solidifying its cultural significance. Thanks to its association with the air travel, Toblerone bars have become synonymous with the airport duty-free sections, known for their large size and relatively higher price. Throughout the years, Toblerone has adapted to consumer demands, offering the product in 10 different sizes and weights, including miniature 200-gram blocks. Despite these variations, the triangular shape remains unchanged symbolizing Toblerone's commitment to its Swiss chocolate heritage. The manufacturing process and unique shape are safeguarded by intellectual property laws to prevent imitations. Toblerone has expanded its product range, introducing a dark chocolate version in 1969, followed by white chocolate and eight additional flavors. However, the classic recipe has remained unchanged, with milk, honey, and almonds as its magical ingredients. Toblerone sources its milk from over 10,000 Swiss cows, honey from billions of bees, and almonds for over 40,000 almond trees. The precise cocoa used, imported from the Ivory Coast and Latin America, remains a closely guarded secret. Today, Toblerone holds the title of the world's most successful triangle, with its influence permeating into wider culture. Interestingly, there was even a Toblerone line during World War II, a series of fortifications stretching 10 kilometers along Switzerland. In Belgrade, Serbia, a Toblerone building exists, named after the chocolate bar due to its shape. Toblerone's logo consistently appears on lists of the most recognizable logos in the world, a testament to its enduring legacy. Part 6. Today and the Future In 1990, Toblerone was acquired by the multinational conglomerate Mondelez International, previously known as Kraft Foods. 
when Dallas International holds a significant share in the global chocolate market, including other brands like Cote d'Or and Oreo. Toblerone continues to be produced exclusively in Switzerland, with its home in Bern. In 2021, Toblerone's net revenue reached $31.5 billion, with over 3 million people consuming its chocolate bars. Currently, the Toblerone produces around 7 billion chocolate bars annually, exporting approximately 97% of its production worldwide. However, the iconic triangular shape of Toblerone has faced imitation attempts. In 2017, Poundland, a British budget store, launched the Twin Peaks Bar, arguing that Toblerone's shape was no longer distinctive enough for trademark protection. Toblerone defended its product and successfully sued Poundland, resulting in the halt of production in 2023. To cope with increasing demand, Toblerone began producing some of its chocolate in Bratislava, Slovakia, which is a significant departure from its traditional Swiss production in Bern. This move poses challenges for the company as it will need to remove references to being a product of Switzerland, including the iconic Matterhorn Peak imagery. The impact on Toblerone's brand remains to be seen. Despite these recent developments, Toblerone's legacy as an iconic candy bar in the global chocolate market is undeniable. In its 115 years of existence, Toblerone has risen to dominate the industry, combining its secret ingredients and ingenuity. Theodore Tobler's vision and the knowledge passed down from his father have shaped Toblerone into a brand that has captivated chocolate lovers worldwide. And that's a wrap for today's episode of Business Central. We hope you enjoyed delving into the fascinating world of business with us. Remember, the journey doesn't end here. Stay connected with us. Like, comment, subscribe to our channel, and click that notification bell so you won't miss a video. Stay inspired, stay informed, and keep making waves in the world of business. See you in the next one.